up my eyes Took me a second but I realized That I'm still the same man I was yesterday See I made a promise to myself To make a change and better myself But I don't feel any difference and that's a shame All I want is to be a better man Late again, but I know the change. No, it don't come easy. Change. No, it don't come easy to me. Change. Change. All I want is change. No, it don't come easy to me. Yeah. 
out This is not mine To carry you with me through my life Hope these scars can heal with time Flexing with his weller there. Brett's got the single barrel. Laura! Laura Simmons! Look at that! Laura Simmons with Blom Brothers. Seriously, you guys... Love the members. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a Friday Night Tasting, a showdown of MGP ingredient stuff. We've got something that is lighting it up on all the socials. Anytime puts a bottle of Smoke Wagon up there, people go crazy. We got the latest edition of uh, Hirsch, the Horizon. That is an MGP product, or it's not a MGP product per se, but they're using MGP liquid. We got Clyde Mays, a an Alabama whiskey uh, that happens to use um, Indiana MGP ingredients. 
Now here's one, you won't find this one on the shelf. This was a, a very limited release of only like 900 bottles that mostly went out to people in the trade. And it was a special medley done by Greg Metz. So this was the first thing that uh, he uh, really kind of put together. Greg was not really a guy who did a lot of product things. He was a distiller. And we got an 11 year old tumbling rice and redemption high rye bourbon. Now. The winner of tonight's taste off will take on my Boone County barrel pick that I did a couple years ago in the members only section. Now I've got six things to taste and I hope I can make it to the members only. I really do. But if you're not a member, go click join. The members will tell you we have a lot of fun and uh, it's a good time. It's a good time. It really is. But first, before I get into the tasting, we got to talk about something. Uh, we got to talk. We've got ourselves a situation. <laughs> somebody, somebody hit me up, and then another person, and then another person, and then another person. Hey, is this Weller Toasted Barrel? Is it real? Is it real? Is it real? And uh, I mean, I think I, I think I woke up to probably about you know, 10 messages. And then as the day went on, I got more. And it was not a day that I was really, I wasn't really responsive. So like, I, I didn't even have time to really look it up. I just sent like a text um, to Sazerac. So, you know, one of my contacts at Sazerac, I was like, hey, what, what is this? Is this, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't sound like something that would fit into the Weller brand. Weller's not a brand that, you know, they're really, uh, you know, dicking around with. You know, they're not going to be, you know, doing much, uh, doing anything with it, you know, other than whiskey is kind of like the history behind it. Um, and uh, so it, I'd be very surprised if they were to do a barrel finish with Weller. But they said it was fake news. It's not real. And um, we all got a lot of time on our hands. And that might be why that happened. But I will say this. I think it's kind of cool that. American whiskey has a lot of parodies. You know, we have all these stickers and we have all, you know, everybody has fun with the, with the barrel pick stickers. I think that's cool. And I think this is kind of cool too. I think it's cool that someone out there, you know, wants to create like a hoax of, uh, of bourbon to kind of like get people riled up on social media. By cool, I mean like it's a moment of like bourbon is, it's, kind of hit that like we're our own like um you know community of like you know we support one another but we also make fun of one another and we also like like to make fun of the situation and i think that's what this is here i think this was harmless this was uh a lot of people having um you know having fun with it uh you know the, but the problem is the problem is is when like Kurt says, labels on eBay. That's where things get really scary. So if things just kind of stayed in our little circle of social media and it stayed in this little pocket of like, aha, look, that, that's funny. Oh, look, a, a cinnamon flavored, um, you know, pappy. Oh, you know, that if it stayed there, you know, we're just part of it and having fun. But as we all know, there's a bunch of dickheads in this world and they are there is a lot of them in this whole um in this in bourbon and they not they are not necessarily in bourbon they're just trying to make a quick buck and you know they're trying to you know sell things um you know flip them they're trying to sell things on ebay uh they're buying things from ebay to like um you know to counterfeit bottles and that's what's that's where things get scary and when we get down that road, when we get, when we start seeing like uh, the counterfeits get into like the, you know, the main stores and everything, that's when we have a problem, you know. But for now, but for now, I think this sort of thing is all in good fun. Um, but for God's sake, for God's sake, if you all see, I mean, if we see a Weller toasted in the, somewhere like a legitimate bottle, like someone's thinking they got a legitimate bottle. I don't even, I don't even know what I'm going to, uh, I, I'm, I don't even know. I don't even know. 
But uh, anyway, they are there. The other angle is the other angle is distillers have uh, long said. A lot of times, what happens is when a distiller says they're not going to do something, and then six months later they actually do it. A good case in point is the Elijah Craig uh, age statement, the 12 year old from a few years ago when they dropped the age statement. I asked them point blank, are you going to do it? No, 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 we're not going, we're not going to drop the age statement. And then they dropped the age statement. So even though they say this is not happening, it may still happen. So it may not be fake news after all. That said, there you go. As uh, Stephen Moore says, uh, he's here, so we can start, you know, and I do have to wait for Steven to show up before we can do, uh, before we can do this tasting. So I have six things to taste. Uh, I am going to start with the Redemption High Rye Bourbon. I have tasted this a couple times before. Okay, real, uh, real bready, real um, pumpkiny, a little bit of cinnamon there. Uh, grain, kind of grainy. I seem to recall liking this. I seem to recall uh, liking this more than the um, the weeded version over there. Hi, Clark, Clark Bar, everybody. Hope you're doing well, Clark. Um, Kevin Snow says, uh, Redemption definitely has one of the worst looking labels that he's ever seen. You know, someone worked really hard on that label and I'm going to have to agree with you because it's not that big, you know, it's not big in font. I mean, the bottle's kind of cool, but the label, label needs some work. Okay. One more taste. Kind of grainy, um, just like flecks of uh, honey and cinnamon, and but grain is the is the first taste. Tumbling dice. Now this is the this is the uh, second or third time I've tasted this. I was not very high on this the previous times. And I want to point out that this uh, tonight's taste off was voted on by the members. Uh, so the members are the ones who decided what I taste. They, they get to decide every, what my Friday tasting uh, will always be. And so if you'd like to become a member, just click join. And you all can join in the fun and craziness. Okay, so tumbling rice. Distilled in Indiana. Okay, making sure because this does not, this smells like a... Uh, Kentucky product. Ah. Bananas foster, um, a bit of like, um, like a pickle, like there's like a pickle smell in here. And then, um, uh, what's that, uh, what's that, what's that fruit? Kiwi. Boy, for an 11 year old, this sure does not taste good. This tastes like um, wood. Ah, uh, wood, bananas. Um, yeah, one more time. It's over bitter. It's over oaked. Um, it's really, really not good. 
I don't really like that. I'm definitely putting the redemption over this one. Yeah, I'm putting the younger one uh, over over that one for sure. Uh, Edward Thomas says, hey, great interview with Johnny Hawkins. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, so if you guys haven't checked it out yet, I got an interview with Johnny Hawkins, lead singer for Nothing More. And... Um, Really good interview when we drank some great whiskey. Um, he was a super cool dude, and he um, talked about his kitty. So, if you like cats, giddy up. Go to Clyde Maid now. I'm finding this to be pretty flat as well. Yes, they, um, this one does not actually have the Alabama style on the label. Uh, the other one that they have is, um, is Alabama style. It's their 85 proofer. I remember doing a tasting and liking it quite a bit more. And guys, I'm just, this is just not drawing. It's not drawing much of a flavor uh, on my palate whatsoever. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting uh, marginal hints of like a chocolate chip cookie, uh, maybe like a chocolate chip cookie dough, but it's very marginal. Yeah. So, of the first three that I have tasted, uh, right now, Redemption High Rye Bourbon is on the leaderboard. Um, I like it quite a bit over Tumbling Rice, and I like it um, more than the Clyde May. So, I'm going to go ahead and put these up here. And because I have six, I don't want to, I'm not going to, you know, figure out, figure out the figure out where they would place. We're just going to go ahead and establish that they didn't do it. So, see ya. Bye. There we go. Put those guys over there. Did I say tumbling rice or tumbling dice? Tumbling dice, yeah. So, tumbling dice is a no-go for me. All right, so here we go. Now, I have actually never had any of this, I don't think. And... Um, if I did have some of this, I do not recall it, which means I probably would have had it in the late hours, but it's definitely open. And here's the story about this whiskey. This whiskey is, this is, uh, this was basically to commemorate, uh, Greg Metz's career. And this was at a time when, um, MGP did not focus on making their own products. I think they put this together in 2013. Yeah, I think it was 2013 that they did this. Um, but what they, what they have, um, what they did here is, is, is was to celebrate him. And Greg is was not a guy that put stuff together in bottle you know so you think of master distillers you think of them for like you know signing off of something going in the bottle i mean he he kept the plant going he made sure the distillate was good and you know and he would taste the barrel from time to time but the way they operated there um they did not um they did not do much of that and so now mgp is getting in all their stuff this would have been this would have been the very first MGP bottled uh, product. So there we go. Got a bit of an old school whiskey aroma. So like, um, you know, some like leather, 
um, like an old, like an old attic, like you can smell like an old attic or not. A, so when I go to the, when an attic smells dusty to me, a basement like can smell damp. So I would say this is like on that attic side. So it has like some of that kind of like dusty smell. Mm. Pretty flat. I'm gonna go back to that redemption. Hi, Ryan. Yeah, I think I'm going. I'm going to go with the redemption high rye over the Mets's medley from the pure perspective of. Um, I mean, it's 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 got flavor there, but it's just too watered down. I mean, I'm a whiskey drinker, eighty proof. I don't buy 80 proof whiskey. I know some people do. But I don't do it. Look at that, man. Redemption High Rye Bourbon. Uh, kind of going on up. Going on up to the box. All right, here we go. So here's Hirsch, the, the new Horizon. This is, uh, this is the... Ooh... That was a heck of a pop there. Nathan points out that I do like uh, red breast, and that's true. I find that Irish whiskeys can be, I think at 80 proof, they can be more, more developed than American whiskeys. I don't know, man. American whiskeys that... American whiskeys that are under 86 proof, they just generally fall really, really flat for me. So, hmm. Okay, so here we are with uh, Hirsch's uh, Horizon. This is a 92 proof. This is their, their latest release. It is a five-year, it's a composite of and I love this label. By the way, like seriously, let's just take a moment to like appreciate this bottle. Beautiful, beautiful label. I love the colors. I mean, these colors almost mimic the colors that I use. That I love the, uh, I love gold and I love like blue. I think it was because of my time in the FFA. And I love how on the back it's like completely transparent. And. Um, this is a really nice bottle. Uh, so we're looking at a uh, ratio of 94%, uh, uh, five-year-old, four months of a mash bill of 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malt barley, and then 6% of six-year, two months, 60% corn, 36% rye, and 4% barley. I mean, that, that right there, folks, that's how you do a whiskey label. That's how you do a whiskey label. By God. Now, let's let's see if it's any good. Oh, I think we got some uh, cops rolling around here. Woo! <laughs> so this is a new product, um, and it's it's a it's an affordable product. From what I have seen, it is available. And it's in that like 40, 45 range. Oh, yeah. Mm, that's good. So it's it is a really nice caramel. Caramel is the most uh, prominent note here. It's coming in. It's coming in like the tip of the tongue, and kind of going back and forth and going you know going back that way, and then you get a nice little spice there. 
Yeah, get a real nice spice. I like, I like this. I like this a lot. I mean, this is this is right now. This is definitely a a, a bourbon to to get because it's it's going to be available, and it's uh it's definitely a different flavor profile. This does not follow the the track of a lot of um, a lot of MGP products. So they did a really good job of of blending this to make it unique. Oh, Matthew Gore says he's going to go pick up a bottle. I think you should. I think you should. It's not much of an investment, uh, for sure. And I'm glad Matthew could join us uh, because uh, Matthew thought he was going to have to work tonight. Matthew's one of those folks that is furloughed and, and now has to go back to work and glad he could be... Uh, I'm glad he could do it. All right, so the caramel is, it, it, it's several layers of caramel. The tongue, um, my tongue is still trying to, you know, figure this out, but it's the way it's hitting the tongue. It almost kind of hits the sides of my tongue first and it kind of moves up toward the tip. Uh, I'm all about like that kind of tongue. Um, I'm all about like how, the, how it hits the tongue and moves around. You know, you hear me talk about that a lot. And it's not always necessarily mouthfeel. Um, hmm. I'd be buying this right now over you know, things like Woodford. Um, I'd probably buy this over Buffalo Trace. You know, it's got some depth to it. Uh, the finish is, is actually pretty long. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a side by side of these two bourbons because while they are not the same necessarily uh, from a blending perspective but they are both in that same age range and at 92 proof so we basically have two really very similar very similar bourbons not similar bourbons but similar similar ages proof same place and okay so i come back to the re come back to the redemption okay so the redemption has some grain notes to it there are no grain notes in the hirsch no grain notes whatsoever now i get some like uh syrup some like maple syrup like that would go on a pancake The grain's there, but there are there, the sweetness notes are there. And then I get some spice. So this kind of follows for me. That is the track. Um, that is the track of an MGP bourbon is that I typically do get like a grain note. I then get like um, like a sweetness, usually in the form of vanilla, like a vanilla custard. And then I would get a spice like a pepper. And that's what makes this Hirsch so unique is it doesn't follow that track. It basically is caramel, 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 caramel. And there's not a lot of other notes or at least a lot of other notes that I can find right now. So maybe when I taste it tomorrow, I pick up something else because, you know, I'm in a different mood, different environment. My mind's in a different place. And, you know, I could pick something else up. But that's what I've said this many times, but... You know, tasting is, it's all about the moment. And, you know, right now I'm coming off of a, a funeral. Um, I've had, you know, I had what was a, an incredible 
first lecture series with Topeka, which if you guys haven't checked that out, go to uh, Fred Minnick, Topeka Live, and uh, where I do these lecture series. And and so now I'm um, I'm kind of like tasting it. So at the end of the day, I'm probably a little worn out, but I still uh, I still think you know my palate's okay. I'm not, I don't think it's I don't think it's as good as it normally is, but it's all right right now. With that said, this does not taste like MGP whiskey. It is fantastic. I'm knocking out Redemption and a whiskey that we all know to be good and uh, you know quite the uh, competitor from uh, from past tastings is Smoke Wagon. So Smoke Wagon has a bit of an advantage coming to this taste off in that it's 111 proof. This is a barrel pick. This is a barrel pick from Total Wine. So it's from Vegas. It's 12 years old. So it's double the age. Ooh, cherry pie, cherry pie. God, that smells, that smells a little bit like heaven. Holy shit, that smells good. Cherry pie, cinnamon. The um, a little thyme, you know, the um, the herb thyme, a little thyme there. Uh oh. We're gonna go in, but I think I got the. Uh, I think I got the nose. I think I know what I got here. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's good. Oh, some bitch. That is so good right there. I mean, that's just like layering on my tongue, kind of dripping down like butter, caressing the top of my jawline, getting in underneath the... It's kind of tickling in underneath the my gums. Um, it's like penetrating my entire mouth, which is not something I necessarily want to have quoted in my obituary, but Fred Minnick, in uh, speaking to about Smoke Wagon, said that it penetrated his entire mouth. Yeah, I probably should get some different phrases. I want to work on that. Mm. Mm. Fuck, that's good. Oh, that's so good. It's the perfect proof. It's the perfect friggin' proof for what this is. I mean, I can still feel it on there. I mean, it's like uh, cherry cobbler, uh, cherry pie. Um, I mean, just uh, so many forms of cherry. And then there's molasses. I mean, this has got a beautiful molasses note that you would find in a lot of the most brilliant rums on the planet. And cinnamon. Um, man. This is so friggin' good. It's like butter on a Pop-Tart. It's so friggin' good. Mmm. All right. Well, this guy's going to take it on next because it um, it defeated the Hirsch. 
And by the way, I mean, how about it? How about it for this Hirsch? I mean, because I do think that this was uh, this was a really good um, product. Really, really good. But uh, smoke wagon, um, smoke wagon, bringing it, um, doing their thing. It is, it is, it is so. It was so good. It was so good. It's interesting. The chat is. Um, I guess the chat is slow on. Uh, like some people are different iterations of the, of the video, uh, because people are asking me questions of things I said like 20 minutes ago. So, interesting, very interesting. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sip on this uh, smoke wagon here. Just to answer some questions. If you guys, um, um, if you guys don't mind, just ask me some questions. Uh, we are going to go. We are going to have a um, a member only, a singling member only. Uh, face off between these two and um, I'll go ahead and I wouldn't type that up here but I want to I want to point out something here that uh, you know uh, bland uh, scape co said new to your channel Fred and really enjoy your show your M Memorial Day show was inspiring and made us all proud to be Americans thanks to you and uh, your fellow so soldiers for your service uh, man thank you for that I appreciate it a, a lot more than you know because, you know, we put ourselves out there and it's, um, um, it's hard, you know, it's hard talking about that stuff. And, um, this is Boone County. I really. I really, um, I really do appreciate that because, you know, one of the one of the things that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to like, you know, do more than just bourbon, you know, which is uh, largely what I'm doing with the art and the musical artists and everything. But at the core of who I am, I will always be a soldier in my heart. I will always be someone. That's that's why I I work like I do and I am kind of who I am is because um, I think I think like um, I still think like a soldier and my battle buddy here uh, Brian Jopek who is on the show is watching and he says same you know amen Dean Thos asked uh, explain your level of palate and aroma um hmm. I would say my my level of my palate is um it it varies it, it definitely varies by day uh one of the over over the years he's wanting to know so right now I think my palate's the best it's ever been I really do believe that you know when I when I was first um, trying to hone it in, I was also tasting wine, and it's very difficult to do you know to, to taste at a high level both wine and spirits. And um, I think you know I've, I haven't cut wine out of my life per se, but I'm definitely a spirits palate now, and and um, it's all about where things hit you. And I feel, I feel very good about it. Now I do think I've gotten, you know, with my with my nose, my nose is like, I train my palate, but my nose is a is a gift. Like, I can I can smell things a mile away. Like, um, I can smell really really well. I always have been able to. Like, we'll be in a grocery store, and I will, I will tell my wife like. I was like, man, someone put way too much perfume on. And then we'll go three rows over and she's like, oh, I, I smell it now. And so like, I just, I smell things and um, 
I've, I've always been that way. Always been that way. Uh, Brett, Brandon uh, Huey asked, uh, have I had any of the Redemption High Ride 10 year old sitting around? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't, you, you know what? I did have that. Yeah, I've had that. I mean, you know, I, I remember it being a little, little oaky. And Joe Peck's having problem with mosquitoes. So. Mosquitoes. My, back to your question, Dean. Um, my nose, my nose is, is, um, that is a natural thing. Like I naturally had the smell. I could smell things, but I trained it to learn to use it toward food for sure. And spirits and wine. But my palate, I had to work, and and um, you know, I I talk about this a lot, but I use a technique called mindfulness, in that I would basically trace like the things that I tasted in my lifetime, and apply it to to the whiskey. Now, you know, I don't necessarily want to get into it tonight, but um, I had uh, definitely, uh, I definitely, that's what helped me get through some of my stuff. You know, coming home from Iraq. Uh, was that mindfulness technique? Uh, Clark Barr says, "Do you do cocktails at all, or just straight whiskey?" Man, I love cocktails. I just mostly like rum cocktails. I'm not a big whiskey cocktail fan. Um, I think cocktails are really about the bartender, and not necessarily the recipe. My favorite uh, whiskey cocktail is the. Um, um is the brown derby that is my absolute favorite whiskey cocktail the brown derby is awesome i love it vodka sucks oh it's sipping on a little bit of 12 year old knob creek i still haven't got that yet i need to i need to pick that up Victor asks, uh, what's my favorite scotch? Um, you know, I, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of some of the more finesse scotches. Um, so like when, when a scotch comes in, it's over peated. Like I like Isla, like Log of Woolen 16 year old to me is a balanced peat, you know, for that region. Uh, some of the Bowmores, um, very balanced for my for me. Um, but I, I like a lot of the nuance that I get out of Speyside. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. I, there's a, I love scotch. And I actually have quite, you know, a growing collection of scotch. So I should probably taste more of that on the show. Tim Evan asks, uh, I'm enjoying the higher proofs lately. The 90 proofers have been sitting idle for a while. I consistently go up and down in waves. Anyone else? Uh, so be careful with that, Tim. You know, you don't want to set your palate. You don't want to burn your palate out. The thing about high proof whiskeys is you can actually hide a lot of flaws in, uh, in the whiskey. Uh, you may have noticed, like, if you watched yesterday... Um, if you watched yesterday, I, um, I I talked about adding water to one of the high high proof ones, and it like got worse, and that's kind of what you you need to you need to look out for that. So make sure that you're just not burning your palate out, and um, yeah. Oh man, I don't know how this. I don't know how this uh, Boone County is going to beat Smoke Wagon. That Smoke Wagon is freaking good. I wish it wasn't a single barrel. Because I would probably put that on my list of American whiskeys of the Year for contention. But a single barrel will not be in contention for, uh, for my... Well, I don't know. Maybe it will. 
I don't know. That's not. I don't know. I don't feel. I feel weird about that. I feel really weird about that. Uh, okay, so it's time to go. It's time to go. It is time to go. I need to get over to the members area, otherwise they will. Um, they will hold a uh, a protest and uh, pull everyone out. But in the Singlings, the Singling uh, members only area, we will be doing a live taste off between um, Smoke Wagon and the Boone County 12 year, both 12 years old. And it will be fun, it'll be engaging. Um, yeah, I'm, um, I'm really stoked about this. Really, really, really stoked. But if you all can come over into the members only area, uh, in the singling section, we're going to be doing this taste off and we have a lot of fun in there. Uh, you might've seen the, the photos coming up beforehand. I like to put uh, people's stuff of what they're drinking, uh, up there. Um, see, see what I'm telling you? See this? They're already hazing me. They're already hazing me in there. <laughs> Ooh, Kurt's saying I'm gonna have to find another contender. He doesn't think that the uh, he doesn't think the Boone County is gonna gonna hold up, but uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. But everybody, thank you all so much uh, for joining me this you know tonight. I think uh, as um, I've seen a few cops kind of driving around and and you know you see stuff on the news um our country's in a little bit of disarray right now from the pandemic through the riots um through a man who lost his life and shouldn't have and it's hard it's hard to like take it all in and and then there really shouldn't be any excuses made for anything i think we should tr we should try to do something that i think's been lost it's been it's been forgotten. Um, we should try to be human to one another and know what it's like to feel and hurt and kind of be there for another human being. And it starts right here. It starts when you go out into your next social media venue. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening everywhere and everybody's wanting to point fingers and blame everybody else and say blah, 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 blah. but you know what there's a lot of people hurting right now and instead of instead of blaming people why don't we try to help one another what happened to that that's what i'd like to see us get back to helping one another and that's what this community has been for me. You've, you all have helped me. You've helped me get through this time, allowing me the opportunity to sit down and talk whiskey with you and you know share a dram over social media. I'm tasting, I'm having fun, I'm giving my notes and all that, but at the end of the day, it's getting to hang out, it's talking. And I can't do it in the room, so I might as well do it here in the cyberwebs. So if you can, if you can pass that on, pass on a little bit of kindness that you passed on to me. Um, I just heard something. But you guys, be safe out there. Don't go licking handrails. Don't go licking trash cans. And remember, it's very important you remember this, that vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer of course i just completely um you know contradicted everything i said about being kind but it's about vodka and that's that's not a person cheers guys members i'll see you in the after party cheers <laughs>